Hello, everybody, and welcome to a conversation with artist Angela Williams. She's exhibiting in the seventh annual Evanston Made Group Show online. <laughs> Hello, Angela. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us. We are finding that people are very excited to connect in any capacity to the artists who were exhibiting. So first and foremost, tell us what it is you're showing in the Evanston Made Group Show. Well, the piece that I'm showing um, is just a continuum of the work that I've been doing. Um, my work, uh, the, the actual piece itself was sold, so I'm excited about that, um, to a local um, Evanston family. Um, and the work is really about my connection to um, the, my African heritage, right? And it's really about markings, that, like the emotional connection between markings and remnants and pieces of things, which I think really kind of expresses the African American experience, right? We don't really, some of us know because of recent, you know, DNA searches, but a lot of us really just don't know, right? We have stories and we have pieces, but we don't really have a full story. And then I think um, also, it also connects to my love for um, the visual arts as graphic designer is where I got my start. So that's, you know, that is where my work um, kind of centers. So it's very graphic. Um, I love bright color. Um, I love pattern and texture. Um, all things African, like you know, cultural, you know, um, elements. So sculpture, um, fabrics, um, music. You know, so just trying to make a connection. So that's really what my work is about. Blending lots of different pieces, and we had someone say to us like oh, I saw this one piece on your website, but I think I've seen other pieces. So you have a pretty diverse body of work. You have assemblage, you have drawing. Um, talk to us a little bit about what you're making right now or what's behind you right now. Well, what's behind me right now is an older work is more of an experimental piece. Um, I don't typically work in acrylics. So that was like an acrylic piece that I did kind of as a test. So, but it still um, embodies the spirit of my work, which is very graphic. It's all about component pieces. You'll see some African symbols in there and spirals and textures. Mm -hmm. So that's, there's a lot of that. And then if you imagine that work being translated into assemblage, so I'll do a lot of collage work. Um, and it's funny how, cause people are like, well, you do collage. How did you, how did that come about? So I would start watercolor paintings and then somehow they go, on a, they go sideways, right? You'd work on a painting and just like, mm, I don't like this. So I'd cut it up. And then I, because of my love of textural things, I have like wire and, you know, I'm an artist. So we always have like stuff, right? So like wire and beads. And then I started making these like arrangements and um, it just was really fun. And I initially did it just as like a little fun side thing. Um, and then I started thinking of them as a series. And then before I know it, I had done like a ton of them. Um, and I, I think the reason I like them is they have a sense of immediacy to them. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the paintings, they take a long time. You know, you speak, you have to draw, you think about it, come back, and then you put the color down. And there's a lot of like back and forth. So with the collage work, it's really immediate, right? I can like assemble things and move them around and kind of get it to where I want it. And then I glue it, you know, and then I'm on to the next one. And I usually have on jazz because that's one thing that I really, really love. Or hip hop, it just depends on the day, right? <clears throat> Excuse me, so I have music that keeps me going. Um, and that's just kind of how I do my work. It's, um, it's intuitive, you know, I think about it, but I don't think about it. And then when you talk about the work that I'm doing now, um, it's really about since, you know, with the whole COVID and being at home, it's really about looking at the body of work that I've created over all of these years, right? So I've been an artist since I was a little kid. I've always known I wanted to be an artist. Um, and so it's like a, a, an accumulation of bodies of work that I've started, right? So I used to do very traditional watercolor paintings. Um, I don't have any posted. I may have one posted on my like site. Now. Traditional in the sense like you were painting a bridge or and or like very re hyper realistic. Yes. And they're mostly of people, right? Um, so families. Um, I, I have one that I did when I was like in college of an African woman um, with beading and the wraps and texture, you know, textile. Um, so it was more of that kind of work, right? Um, more portrait based. Mm -hmm. watercolor and then I started to do an abstraction of that I would take um, profiles and then symbols and more graphic and just kind of stretch it because I kind of got bored with like just traditional 
watercolor, right? Although I find it, you know, beautiful and fascinating at the same time. I was like, mm, I'm done with this. So, um, so I just kept pushing forward. And so mm -hmm. now it's pushed me into the work that I'm in now. Well, and yeah, it feels like in looking at your body of work, like there's been certain levels that you've hit and then you're like, I need to push myself even further. Um, when did you start referring to yourself? This is a question we find really fascinating with everyone we interview. When did you start owning the title of artist? Mm. When you gave yourself permission to walk into that? Where, at what point in your career did that happen? Well, I am very blessed and fortunate to say my mother, just in, she mm. encouraged the arts from the beginning. She was an artist of many different expressions. She loved to cook. She loved Julia Child. She loved PBS. We would go to the St. Louis Art Museum. I went to Greek festival, all the festivals, <laughs> right? The music shows. I mean, all things art. Um, she was also a painter, right? So she um, uh, would paint um, mostly in oils. And that's just not my thing. Oils just are too excruciating. Mm, 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 dry you wait. wait. You have to wait no, too long. Too much. I can't with it. Mm -hmm. But I, I love it. It's gorgeous, right? So I have a great appreciation for it. So any, in any case... Um, and then being an only child, I think it was like the perfect thing. Here, baby, do some, make some stuff. So very young, I was doing like little puppet shows and making like assemblages and boxes, take cereal boxes and make like little, um, I was telling someone that I used to make uh, like little towers and I had like a little string you could pull and take the people up in the elevator and I used to put on shows. Yeah, that, I was that kid. I was doing the puppet show, you know, the highlights, remember highlights? Okay, come on, you know highlights. I do. Highlights magazine. Highlights. They teach you how to do, like, take the egg and then blow the middle mm -hmm. out, and then you make a paper mache, and then you make a little outfit, and then you do, like, a little show. I was, that was. That so was from the time that you were very, very little, you very, were, you were making yeah. it, and you had a supportive parental unit. What, who do you turn to, either before a body of work or before you approach a canvas, who or what inspires your body of work? There are, there's so much to see and just drink in in the world. So I am constantly inspired by a lot of stuff. There's no one thing. I think my center focus, again, is learning and understanding the deep and rich historical culture of, of what is Africa, right? North African art is different than South African art, than East Coast and West Coast, than the center, or the Congo, you know, and it has all of these different expressions. And I... Um, did not study, I do, took a few classes, right, in college, but I didn't really study art history in that way, right? So I'm really, really interested in understanding the connection between traditional African art and how it was used in a very different way that we use it today or refer to it today. So it's really a melding of, you know, like looking back at an ancient past that we really, many of us are not connected to i'm i don't i will just own and say i'm not feel connected to but there is a connection right i look at it and it feel it's beautiful to me right and then there's some connection there so that's that's really um and then also um, my love of music really is a foundation it help, it inspires me and moves me um to just keep working i think what especially when i'm working on a lot of collage work um because it has a very abstract nature um, so the pieces are called improv improv improvisational compositions, right? Because mm -hmm. they're like, I'm improving as I go. So that's kind of the spirit of that work is like you're improving as you go. So you have a series of colors and wires and shells or beads and things and you make, and I'm creating these assemblages as I'm listening to work. And it really just reflects my love. I grew up in the 60s, you know, late 60s, 70s, baby. My mom listened to a lot of jazz um, Miles Davis, you know, um, Carlos Santana, just a whole yeah. range of things in the background. She had artistic friends. So I kind of grew up in that like hips, hippy dippy, you know. Well, you, and you, your work has a very um, improvisational and musical feel to it. The, the smaller pieces, that, because it feels almost like I'm looking at an instrument, I might be looking at musical notes. Like there's a very specific tie between obviously what you're listening to and what you're making. Oh, that's, that's great to hear. I, you, know, I, you don't really have a chance to talk with people very often about what they see in your work, like they mm -hmm. um, purchase it, you, you know, there's a short, you know, connection there. Um, but to hear that you can see that in my work is, is, is refreshing. Yeah, it's interesting, right? 
Um, and it's very playful and it's very, very fun. And I'm really grateful that now in talking to you more, like now I can understand the impetus of it before I was like, oh, that's interesting that she's uh, using Detris to make her work, but it's more than that. It's music and it's inspiration and it's, yeah, African culture too, that is so much informing it. Right, and if, even in the smaller pieces, a lot of, um, I, I love the uh, financial sections. So whenever I can, I grab the newspaper and just take out the financial sections and the numbers, right? The percentages or the weather. And Wait, the why do you love the financial? What is I think mean? it's just all the numbers, like it's a series of numbers that are so abstract, like you would have to be in that world to understand it, but it means something to someone, right? So it's like a fragment of something that has value you know, like the stock market, you know, or these words that are like, it'll say, you know, avant-garde something, you know, it's just, I'll look in the paper and I'll see words that are inspiring to me that feel like they fit at that moment, right? But the-, right, the because it doesn't always have this, the horizontal ex explanation of the word sometimes, it, right? It's just, and that's also very interesting about your work is like, it's abstraction. Yeah, it's abstractions, right? And that's kind of how life is, right? You just kind of move from thing to thing. And sometimes you have a piece of something or like a, a, something your family gave you that, you know, or, oh, I remember I wore this thing or memories come back and pieces and conversations. And so I, I that is all just, like I said, it's a very intuitive process. Um, but in the moment, that's kind of the, that is the foundation of the work. And that's sort of, just to full circle this, that's like the medium pieces that oftentimes modern day Black Americans have in our culture of like having to piece together all different parts of their history or their story. Right, and that's with jazz and blues and all the music. And that's why the music is so, you know, quintessential to our experience, right? So it all fits together, like taking like hip hop, which I absolutely love. I have a 16 year old and I listen to music that I probably would not have listened to with her. And a lot of it is influenced by jazz. You can hear it in the, in the tones. I don't, I'm not a music person. I never studied music. I played a recorder. And but you listen to it though significantly enough that you can speak about it. Yeah. Yes. Right. So, you know, the constant beat and then you'll have like, da -da -da, you know, and then you'll have another person comes in and does their piece of it, but it all hangs together as one composition. Like Miles Davis, who is not from St. Louis, which is my hometown, he's from um, Illinois, um, just on the other side, like in, near um, East St. Louis, but his story is amazing. And if you follow his trajectory and I listen to his music and I'll, I like, I want to go create something because I hear his music, right? mm -hmm. the way he would think about music is, is really fascinating and so, um, so rich and deep. Right. And so complex, about. so many layers. Yeah. So many layers. So if I can, you know, express that or kind of touch on that as an artist, I think I've, that's, that's really what spurs me. Well, and it's what connects, I mean, as we talked about in the top of the interview, you, your piece in the group show sold, congratulations. We're Thank like you. super pumped about that, but also you're exhibiting in the gallery windows and your work has sold in the gallery windows. There's obviously something deeply connective about the work you're making. So whatever your journey, that you're on, keep at it. <laughs> and thank you so much for being a part of this conversation and a part of the Evanston art scene. I'm super grateful for you. Well, I'm super grateful to be a part of this community. Um, it's a fantastic opportunity to connect to people and, you know, so thank you. <laughs>